Okay, welcome to video number 55 of the Diaries of a Current Virologist YouTube channel. Today is the 18th of March and we're up to about 121 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 around the world and around 2.6 million confirmed deaths. So before going into the topic tonight, as per the title of the video, I'll be talking about the AstraZeneca vaccine and reports of blood clotting that are suggested, were suggested to be associated with it. I'll get into that. I just wanted to do a couple of general things. So firstly, it's been around a year since lockdowns started to go into full force in many places around the world, Baltimore, where I am, being one of them. So this time around St. Patrick's Day last year was pretty much when it became clear that lockdowns were going to have to be put into effect. It's a strange year we've all suffered through, but I continue to feel like there might be some light at the end of the tunnel. Vaccines are being rolled out well in many places. They continue to look safe and effective against preventing COVID-19. Again, I'll come to that with regards to AstraZeneca shortly. And the weather is about to turn in the Northern Hemisphere where the majority of cases are. Obviously, as it gets warmer, more people spend more time outside. This lowers the risk of transmission and it allows us to have that break for our mental states of actually seeing people, spending time with people and doing fun things, not just being locked away. So I'm feeling somewhat optimistic. The variants are still causing some concern in my head, there's still a little bit of a black cloud, it's not a completely sunny sky, but there's good news floating around regarding vaccines still having some effect and companies trialling variant vaccines to target the variant viruses. So I think we're in a reasonable place right now. As for some general lab things, for those regular watchers, you'll remember in my video last week that I was talking about the woes of PRNT50 assays and explaining what they were and why they weren't working for me. Well, the good news is that the work I put into Troubleshoot all paid off and last week we got some good data. I, try, I was aiming for 30 plaques per virus, so we were looking at the original virus, the B117 and the B1351 variants, which are the UK and South Africa variants respectively. I got 45, 18 and 11 plaques for each of those different viruses, so it wasn't perfect, but it's still usable. And the experiment actually gave us some pretty good data as well can't go into the specifics because of interested parties and the fact it's just been done once in a lab, we haven't put anything together to put out on a preprint server or anything like that. When we do, I'll happily talk about it in more detail. But for now I just want to say it looked good. The data were encouraging about the efficacy of what we were looking at against these variant viruses, so that's always good news. Currently I'm working on just trying to improve that assay further, improve how we function, how we're doing it, make it easier for us doing the experiments, doing the infections, and to iteratively improve our, our infections. So as I say, I've got about 45, 18, 11. So this week it's my minor tweaks just to try and improve that and get closer to 30 because that's a really good number for us to count in the way we set this up. And that's just the general stuff I wanted to talk about. So onto the main topic tonight, which is AstraZeneca vaccine and blood clotting. One of these days, I may manage to do a video that isn't just about vaccines. I'm trying my best to move away from them, but today is not that day. Things keep coming up, obviously, because they're very important. They're being rolled out and there's intense scrutiny and interest in them. So I need to keep talking about them. However, I will preface this discussion about the AstraZeneca vaccine and this potential link to blood clotting with the fact that I'm not an epidemiologist and I'm going to be talking about stuff that is much more in the realm of an epidemiologist. My expertise lies much more in basic cell biology of viral infection, so studying what a virus does to a cell in order to infect that cell and make more copies of itself. However, part of being a virologist is knowing all of, enough about all of these disparate areas to be able to think critically about what's going on. And so I'm going to use this as a discussion as kind of a way to demonstrate how I think about these reports. When I see the stories coming out from Europe that the AstraZeneca vaccine might be causing blood clots, my instant thought was, hmm, that sounds interesting, what about this? So that's the kind of thought process I'm going to go through tonight. It's not going to be a perfect 
epidemiological assessment. If there's any epidemiologists who watch, I'm sure they may have critical input, which would be valued uh, down in the comments. But I still can think critically enough about this as a scientist, and that's what I want to discuss tonight. So come with me on a journey as we take a little look at blood clotting and AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine. But just in case anyone hasn't been aware of this, the current state of play is that in the EU, there have been reports that people who've been given the AstraZeneca vaccine have developed blood clotting. And there's a suggestion that those two things are associated. This has led to various countries in the European Union halting the rollout of the AstraZeneca vaccine. So Germany, Germany, Italy, France, Spain, Norway, Denmark and Ireland have all stopped rolling out the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. The WHO and the European Medical Association have said that the vaccine, there is not solid evidence to link blood clotting and the AstraZeneca vaccine. And the argument I'm going to lay out for you in this video is that I think that decision to halt it was taken far too hastily. And I think that that actually may have negative consequences. However, in order to make that argument, I want to take you through the kind of assessment I made and look at some of the numbers. Now we'll preface this by saying that some of these numbers are a little bit squishy and they're not great necessarily. The research I did for this to find all the information I needed to make my opinion about what's going on is all from news articles. Um, there's no published scientific data about this yet, it's too soon. And what I've done is just search through Google AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine and blood clotting and read various different places. Some of them have different numbers depending on what day I read the article, the numbers are slightly different, so I'm just going to take some of the general numbers. And what those general numbers are that I'm going to use for the laying out this argument today on Thursday the 18th of March is that there have been 30 cases of blood clotting in people who've received the COVID-19 vaccine and that total number is 5 million. So 30 people out of 5 million have developed some kind of blood clotting problems with some, some of those being fatal. So 30 people out of 5 million translates into one person in every 167,000 people. Or put a different way, that is 0.00006%. So 0.40, then a 6. A very small percentage. So it's rare, but that doesn't mean that we can instantly say there isn't a connection between the vaccine and the development of this blood clotting could be that there is a causal link, but it could also be a correlation, a correlative link, an overlapping in a Venn diagram. So let's use an example of deep vein thrombosis, a blood clotting issue. Every year, one in 5,000 people develop deep vein thrombosis, or DVT for short. So if we work with our 5 million population number of people who've been vaccinated in the EU, we use that one in 1,000 people. That means in that population, 5,000 people would be expected to develop deep vein thrombosis, an example clotting issue. That's across the course of a year. So let's break that down to a week, 52 weeks in a year, that comes down to 100 cases. If we break that down further into a day, that's 14 cases per day. I was a little bit surprised to find out that there are 14 cases of deep thrombosis every day around the world, but those are the numbers. So in our population, 14 people a day. That means in two days, 28 people will develop deep vein thrombosis, regardless of vaccination or anything else. That's just a baseline number. We have 30 instances in all the time that this AstraZeneca vaccine has been rolled out. And that's been longer than two days. So that's already starting to make it look like this is a coincidental link, not a causal link. However, we can do that analysis better and be more critical when looking at the numbers. So in Germany, there have been eight cases that have been reported out of 1.6 million people vaccinated. At least that was the number that I saw in a Reuters article and a Washington Post article for the total number vaccinated. So eight people out of 1.6 million people who've developed blood clotting issues, 
That translates nicely into one in 200,000. They were said to have been diagnosed with cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, CVT. I'm not a medical doctor, I'm a PhD scientist. So I don't know what CVT really is, but that's what they've been diagnosed with, cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, so it's blood clotting in the brain. So then we can look at what the incidence rate of CVT is, cognitive vein venous sinus thrombosis is. And this is, wasn't a yearly number I pulled out, this was just a general incidence rate. What I found for that is that it's between one in 500,000 people and one in 200,000 people. In Germany, eight people out of 1.6 million people who've been vaccinated have developed CVT. That's one in 200,000 people. That's almost, well, that is pretty much spot on with the incidence rate that would be expected. So again, this is painting a picture for me, in my assessment, that this is a correlative link. This isn't a causation. Certain people are going to be vaccinated and then get in a car crash later that day or in that week just because of the probability of how many people are in car crashes and the fact that there's lots of people being vaccinated. It doesn't mean the vaccine made that person get into a car crash. To take a slightly more humorous example of this, in the UK they have what's called the yellow card system for reporting events that are occur around the time of a vaccine, so adverse events such as headache, fever, all those kind of things. But there's also been four reports of people who developed genital herpes after receiving the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. That isn't to say that the vaccine is causing genital herpes, that's just a coincidental link. There was also a report of 89 people who have flatulence in the yellow card system. I don't think this vaccine is causing people to be more flatulent. So we've basically ended up at a point where we have overlapping Venn diagrams. We have lots of people who are being vaccinated and we have a certain number of people who are going to develop any kind of blood clotting problem and there is going to be some overlap in those people. This isn't a vaccine against blood clots, it's a vaccine against COVID-19. So there will be a degree of overlap and as, as I've laid out with the numbers I've looked at, it's looking like it's matching up as you'd expect statistically. There's no reason from those numbers to think that the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine is causing blood clots. Now it doesn't mean that we should completely ignore this and write it off as unlucky for those 30 people. It merits some degree of study. There could be important things to find here that maybe those people have some similar dietary issues or similar family histories of blood clotting more likely. Maybe they have they're all people who've suffered blood clotting problems in the past. There could be important things to find out, but to me it is not suggesting that the vaccine is responsible for these problems. And therefore deciding to halt the rollout of the vaccine is a decision that in my view was taken too hastily. Especially when you consider that in the light of the fact that COVID-19 is also associated with blood clotting problems. Now again, the numbers here are a little bit squishy, it's a bit hard to assess these kinds of things and find reliable and firm numbers. But one study I found, which I'll put a link to down below, which was published in a journal associated with The Lancet, suggested that people who develop COVID-19, about 20% of them develop some degree of blood clotting problem. This study was a meta-analysis so that took lots of different publications of case studies of people who had COVID-19 and looked at all of the information in those and then made another study using all of those other smaller studies. So they looked at 42 different studies and that included over 8,000 people. And they found that 20% of those had some issues of blood clotting as well as having COVID-19. Now that sounds very high to me, I'm not sure if 20% is the overall number, this population is probably skewed towards the more severe cases, but let's just again do a little critical thinking with respect to the numbers. In the United States, 29 million people have been infected with COVID-19. I'm using the United States, one because I'm based in the States, but also very good testing, so probably a very good estimate of how many cases there have been. Out of those 29 million people, 1.9 million of those 
have been hospitalized. And this is 0.06% of people. So let's say that out of those 1.9 million people, if that 20% number were to be true, that would be 380,000 people who developed some kind of blood clotting problem as a result of COVID-19. Now, if we compare that back with the numbers we were looking at for, that are being reported in the EU, so as a reminder, that being the 30 cases of blood clotting problems from 5 million vaccinated people, that being 0.0006%. Let's just take all of the people that have been infected by COVID in the United States. 0.0006% of 29 million is 174. So if all those people, all tw <coughs> excuse me, if all 29 million people had been vaccinated instead of infected, 174 of them, based on the current level of incidents, would have developed clotting issues. Based on people who've developed severe COVID, I've made an estimate on some of the numbers I've seen that 380,000 people might have had blood clotting issues because of COVID-19. So that really strongly points towards that the benefits of the vaccine in preventing infection far outweigh the risk that maybe 0.00006% of people are developing blood clotting problems. Now laying out these kind of arguments makes me seem like a very cold, horrible person because obviously those 30 people, that's terrible and horrible for them. Every individual negative thing is terrible. But for this, we have to look at the whole breadth of what's going on. Preventing COVID-19 looks like it's going to far outweigh any potential link between the vaccine and blood clotting at the rate that's being reported in the EU. And I think based on the numbers that are occurring, that's a correlative link, not a causation link. So that idea of the overlapping Venn diagram. And that's just my outline and framework for how I was thinking about this and how I have been thinking about, is there a link between blood clotting and the AstraZeneca vaccine? Ultimately, to me, everything points towards this being a correlative link, not a causation. Certain number of people are going to develop a certain number of conditions because they're vaccinated. This vaccine isn't going to prevent every kind of death or any malady in the world it's to prevent COVID-19 and it's doing a very good job of that. This vaccine is effective, it remains safe based on everything I'm seeing and because of everything that COVID can do to people, the benefits of the vaccine are far outweighing, way outweighing any perceived risk that's coming from these reports. However, again, I will stress that I think it is worth assessing this properly and critically this should be followed up on it should continue to be studied but i think that halting the rollout of the vaccine is going to be more detrimental and putting out all of this press coverage and news stories is going to erode confidence in the vaccine and hopefully my video goes some way to helping whoever watches it be a bit more confident in the idea of this vaccine still being safe and effective anyway that's all i've got to say for tonight so thank you for watching as ever, if you found the video useful and interesting, please drop a like for the YouTube metrics. Please share with any friends and family who may also find it useful. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're new around here. And if you've got questions and comments, please leave them down below and I will do my best to get to them as time allows. As always, please stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask and keep calm and carry on. We will get through this pandemic.